please welcome CEO Thomas. Well, hello there. How you folks doing? How you folks doing? There you go, because you got to say it right. He in the, the, the greeting in the state of Maine, how you doing? The reply, G-O-O-D-N-U. Good, no. So how you folks doing? Good, you. There you go, right on the nose, by golly. You're all right. Well, thank you very much, and welcome to Cabin Fever Comedy Show at PPM TV. We got a live audience. We got a, oh, we're going across the airwaves to millions and millions. <laughs> well, a boy can dream, can't he? I think he can dream if he wants to. Anyway, yep, we got a show here for you. Let me explain what's going on. We got Cabin Fever Comedy. I got two of my good friends. One I kind of know. One I've known for 30 years. So we got some professional comedies. Because you see, when we started talking about this about a couple of months ago, geez, I don't know, three, four months ago, said, let's have some cabin fever comedy. Because we figured this time of year, you'd all be going crazy going, going, with all the snow and stuff. You know, oh, we want to get out of the house. But kind of didn't turn out that way, did it? Although, although now we got this big storm coming now. It's in March. The big one's coming. The big one's coming. Oh, geez, watch out now. I think they've been saying that every weekend for the whole gosh darn winter. But anyway, so we got the show Cabin Fever. We're calling it that anyway, and we're going to have some fun. So, uh, oh, I guess I ought to be polite and, uh, and you know, magnanimous or whatever the big words is, and introduce myself. I am Mr. C.L. Thomas from Cape Cove Harbor, Maine, a town as redundant as it sounds. <laughs> That's right, Cape Cove and a harbor for you flatlanders, it's all the same thing, just <laughs> geographically it's a bigger or smaller, anyway, anyway, so Cape Cove Harbor, where next to nothing happens, and when it does, nothing gets all upset. <laughs> so play on words there, see, you got that, all right, that's a good thing, so yeah, uh, and uh, I, I got a show also here on PPM TV, little vignettes things, it's called, sort of like that Andy Rooney boy way back when, and it's called The Things That Ain't Right with C.L. Thomas. So I, I like to come up with things that ain't right, and, uh, and I, I tell you about it. We got some vignettes, but I'm going to talk about it tonight, too, and uh, let's just start off with, uh, well, first, I guess I ought to congratulate you folks for surviving the holidays. <laughs> yeah, that's spelled D-A-Z-E, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, come, come January, don't we all just let out a big old breath? <sighs> Thank gosh that was all done, huh? We got all decorated up. Oh, and speaking of it being matched now, if you still got your lights up, take them down, <laughs> would you, for Jesus' um, sakes? Unless, of course, you live in one of them trailers, and then, you know, the trailer park got to light it up. But we'll talk about that later. But no, no, he, uh, the holidays, we all survived it, but gosh, it gets some kind of trying. You got to do this and all that. Well, I got, I, got, I got a things that ain't right about the holidays. Matter of fact, that's what I call a thing that ain't right. That's a, the TAIs. What I see, see, my dream for the kids in that Snapchatting and Instagrammer and all them, uh, what's that other quick little one? Um, TikTok. Uh, TikTok there you go. Them, them's ones from the, from the Far East. I don't know if I trust them. I don't, we all love TikTok. Don't, don't be spitting on it. Now, oh, so anyway, yeah, I think instead of LOL, old CL Thomas is going to start a TAI. That ain't right. <laughs> That's my dream. A guy can have a dream, can't he? I think he should. So anyway, my, my dream about things that ain't right about the holidays. Let's start there. I think it's uh, first starts off with the songs. The carols, they call them. Christmas carols. I don't know where Carol came involved in all that. Is, is, was she like a cousin of uh, old St. Nick or something? Or the Chris Kangrel? I don't know. Is that with a C or a K? I get all confused. Anyway, the songs. Uh, let's see, what song gets me the worst? Oh, I think it's, um, uh, what was it there that, uh, oh, Little Drummer Boy, let's start off with that one. That's got a nice little ring to it, don't it? It's a beautiful story, ain't little tight, can't bring in all the gifts like the uh, three wise men with the incense and meh. I still ain't never seen no meh before. 
I think meh is when you had too much Budweiser, you know, when you're drinking with your camels, meh. But anyway, so no, uh, the sort of little drummer boy, all he can do is pa rum pum 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 plays his little drum for the little baby Jesus. And that's pretty good, I like that. But it seems like almost all them Christmas songs, they kind of wear out uh, with the lyrics come out third verse or so. Because in the third verse of this one, in Little Drummer Boy, they actually say, the ox and lamb kept time, pum 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 Now in old CL's view, I got it in the back of my head. I see, I got a vision of these animals in the back of the manger going, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> that ain't right. Then you get that other one that, that you get that song, uh, the, the one, oh, I loved it as a little boy because it was the first one I got to memorize. It stuck right in my head, Silent Night. Silent night, holy <laughs> night. Oh, I would sing that out in the choir. Holy. Except again, come about third verse, it gets a little strange. It says, holy infant, so tender and mild. <laughs> really? The baby Jesus is tender and mild? All of a sudden, that little infant turns into a barbecue chicken sandwich somehow. I don't know. It's, it's like, well... Hey, infant's a little tender and mild. Put some more sauce on it. <laughs> oh, I know that's old tech religious. Don't be talking about it that way. Anyway, yeah, then the other one I love is uh, on this one. I felt Deck the halls. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. But then they run out of words. Fa la 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 la. Here's a pen, boy. Finish that, sign, that song up, would you? <laughs> He just, you know, smoking a, a, a camel too much, and I'm like, fa la 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 Yeah, that'll do, that'll do. That'll do. But, of course, the, <laughs> and this is a little adult. We got a warning about adult humor. This is, this is a true story, because my, I was the last of six, or I am the last of six kids, and I, when I was growing up, I wanted to be in that church choir. And then, wouldn't you know, the song we had to audition for, try out for, was Deck the Halls with Bowser Holly. So I started... I said, and then my older brother, he was a little Rex Scallion, he was. He, my big brother, he come up and he tells me, you know, the actual words is deck your balls with boughs for holly. <laughs> and wouldn't you know that the choir director's name was Holly Bruna. <laughs> so there I am, third grade up there, all by myself. Deck your balls with boughs of holly for holly for holly. Well, geez, I didn't make it that time. That <laughs> took me a few more auditions. But anyway, but the thing I like about Christmas, and speaking of when I was a little boy, that was that was uh, that was the hard part. But the good part, the good type, being the being the last of six. I remember my mother, God rest her soul, and God bless her for what she did with all six of us. Come Christmas Eve, she would call each of us into her bedroom as she wrapped the gifts so that we was all part of it. It was very nice. And I remember the first thing I got to do was put my finger on that knot. You remember when you, she tied the bow and you put the finger there and then she tied a bow, boom, and you pull your finger out and then it was all tight. I remember that. I was so proud of that. And then she did something I thought was miraculous. With that ribbon, she would take out a pair of scissors. I don't know if some of you might know where I'm going. And she'd take the scissors and zip along the, the ribbon and what would happen to that ribbon to me was a miracle <laughs> how did that work what did it do yep some of you did it was z -z 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 curled right up didn't it i thought oh my goodness that is that's a sign from god right there little baby jesus right here in this room look at that <laughs> how'd you do that with the scissors oh that just touched me something perfect and it stayed in my head pretty long time because i remember about three or four years later, being the last of six, I had three sisters. And they used to drive my mother crazy because one sister had straight hair and she wanted it curly. And the other curly-haired one wanted it straight. And they both used them curlers. Remember who, folks old enough out there in the TV, TV audience understand? They, girls would wear curlers in their hair to get it all right. And well, one sister curled it that way to make it straight, the other curled it that and make it curly. I didn't make no sense of that at all. I couldn't figure that out. But then I remembered one night that whole miracle of my mother. So don't you know, I seen a pair of scissors after my sisters went to bed. So I grabbed them scissors and I snuck right into that bedroom and I knew my sister with that straight hair and I said, no, I didn't do it. She stopped me. They, they woke up and they thought I was going to ring, ring, ring. 
<laughs> it went like that. But so anyway, I just, uh, I thought that was kind of funny, and I, I'm glad you folks did too. That, that's, a, that's the things about holidays that stick in my head, and, and I guess we get some chuckles out of that, but I think we ought to continue the chuckling, don't you folks? Continue the chuckling by bringing on my friends here. They're going to help you laugh also. And this first gentleman is the one I was telling you about it. He was, I've known, uh, I've known you, Bob, for about, what, 30 years at least, I'd say. And, and this boy has been, uh, he's been on cruise ships. He's been uh, on national TV. And uh, I'll tell you what, he does things that I don't understand. He does different voices. Yeah, he, he can make his voice sound like somebody else's, and I don't understand that at all. So, so I would like to bring up to the stage right now my, my good friend, Mr. Bob Gattro, ladies and gentlemen. You want to get that mic? And he's, just, he's got to eat Thank that. Thank you, everybody. And you, Thank you. I gave you one stool. What, are you kind of well, particular? Let's... No, I'm having a stool problem. Okay, sounds like you <laughs> got, need a proctologist, do you? That's right. <laughs> That's one of my first uh, big words I learned. I just came from the proctologist before I got here. Do tell. It was someone I knew. And? and well, I got in the thing, and he said, well, geez, it's nice looking up old friends. Aww. That's why I like Bob. He's <laughs> so, got a million of them. I'll just I, sit right back. He, he you know what I didn't know was that we do have a lot in common because I am the youngest of six children, too. Well, there you go, buddy. Do you know that uh, I think... For the first, and we were poor, you know, the first, like, I don't know, 15 years of my life, I wore nothing but hand-me-downs. I have four sisters. So, um, that explains a lot, don't it? It sure does, <laughs> sure does. Um, no, you I were was going to jump in when you said you, you was poor, and I was going to ask you that Johnny Carson thing, how poor were you, but... But, well, it's funny, you know, you mentioned Johnny Carson. We were just talking about this on the, on the other way because I, I told him, I says, I says, I work with this guy, and he does impressions, and he was so good. And I was like, geez, I have to go after him because he is so, so good. And, and talk about you because oh. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, oh, my God. So, um, but, but you, you mentioned the impressions, and, and you know what we never did? We never did The Wizard of Oz together. <gasps> Jeez, we no. never did it. We, never we did might want to close the show with that, maybe. Let's save that for the end. Yeah, that's right. He's talking about my alter ego, that Mr. T -t -t Tom Clack. He does a lot of books. Yeah. I don't know how, but anyway. You but I am an impressionist. Uh, right, just in case you're wondering, right now I'm doing me. <laughs> Brilliant! Brilliant! I'm doing a wicked good job right now. I look like... How many people here have seen me before? Would you raise your hands if you saw me before? Besides you, the guy I brought up. How many people... <laughs> <laughs> how many people have never seen me before? Raise your hands. How many people are never coming back to see me? Raise your hands. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, so thanks for thanks for coming. I uh, you you were talking about Christmas. I love Christmas. We all love Christmas. You're talking about impressions. This is my impression of Whitney Houston's favorite Christmas Carol. Silent night. That's it. <laughs> Uh, people should have sung, like, could you imagine if Lenny and Squiggy sang A Christmas Carol? Len did you ever see Laverne and Shirley on TV? I well, have yeah, indeed, yes, Lenny sir. and Squiggy's favorite Christmas Carol. The first Noel, me and Lenny did say, hey, what kind of a gift should we buy Laverne today? <laughs> For Shirley, we bought some strawberry jam. By Laverne, we decided on new monogram. <gasps> No L, no L, she had no L, won't wear it, no. How about, uh, no? What about uh, Tim Gunn's favorite Christmas carol? Just hear those sleigh bells tingling, my balls tingling too. Come on, it's lovely weather for a gay ride together with you. Outside the snow is... Yeah, I better cut that we, one we, off that we, before we, before we, we get there. Two ball references right at the top of the show there. We, we, well, you know what? The, my favorite thing about, uh, about Christmas is, is Johnny Mathis. Because you, you have him December all the way through Valentine's Day. And for Valentine's Day, forget it. You ask how much I need you must. I explain. Well, if you're going to leave out half the words, you must explain. <laughs> I love it because it's like being a little kid, you know, when you listen to him, you're like, well, okay. 
and then Christmas comes, he's Mr. Christmas, when he sings Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the voice skips in and out, it, it, it sounds like a dirty song being bleeped. So I, I'll do the whole Duke thing. Channel. We're close enough. You ready? You know Dasher and Dancer, Pantser and Vixen, Comet and Cupid, Donner and Blitzen, but do you recall the most reindeer of all? This song has been censored for your protection. <laughs> but um bum bum Rudolph the Red Reindeer had very shiny. And if you ever it you would even say it. All of the <laughs> other reindeer used to and call him. <laughs> they never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer. Then one foggy Christmas, Santa came. Oh, jeez. Um. <laughs> A Rudolph with your <laughs> so won't you, my tonight? And then how the reindeers him and it out with glee. Rudolph the Red Reindeer, you go down. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you for that Jesus. truly weak round of applause. Jesus. Five people. <laughs> so, uh, uh, did you have a nice Christmas? I, I did. I kind of, I kind of like the old North Pole, and I something came down my chimney kind of nicely, and uh, it was, I, I, I enjoyed it. I did. I had. You know what I got? I got a collection. Somebody gave it to me. All the songs you love, sung by the people who never should have sung them. <laughs> Ever. Ever. Such as? Well, Brian Lynch. Remember Brian Lynch, that newsman got fired because he said he'd gone to Vietnam oh, when really yeah, he had, yeah. was, had reported from the hotel near the action. He said he saw the action. I do remember him? Yes, Brian do. Lynch. What if he sang the Eur Eurythmics? Would I lie to you? Would I lie to you, honey? <laughs> you were mentioning what's his name from 60 Minutes. What's his name? Andy Rooney. Well, what if he them collar and Burt Bacharach just pa <gasps> passed away? What if Andy Rooney sang uh, Dionne Warwick? Is this a dream? Am I here? Where are you? What's in back of the sky? Why do we call? How about that? I like that. How about George Burns singing Rod Stewart? If you think I'm sexy and you want my body, come on, sugar, let me know. If this mic isn't bad, <laughs> Columbo <laughs> sings the Rolling Stones. Hey, you, get off my cloud. <laughs> Thank you both, fans of TV land. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> right. Dr. Ruth sings Jefferson Airplane. The pill makes you larger and the pill makes you small. <laughs> Excuse the laugh, I've been sleeping with Flipper. <laughs> I think everyone in life should have a porpoise. <laughs> I got a tight seal. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Uh, Dr. Ruth sings, sings, what is it, the Beach Boys. <laughs> Wipe out. And then, and then, how about, uh, remember Robin Leach? What, what about Robin Leach singing the Beatles? Picture yourself on a boat, on a river, with tangerine dreams, and a man who needs no microphone at all. Marv Albert sings the Beatles. You say, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Same song by Lenny and Squiggy. I don't know why you say goodbye. I say, hello. <laughs> My favorite, Dustin Hoffman sings the Beatles. She loves you, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 42 laughs, definitely 42 laughs from six people, 42. <laughs> Five people got that, two coughs. <laughs> Told the same joke three times. <laughs> so the one cameraman is gonna rent Rain Man, understand what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> one, uh, what about what about modern stuff? Modern stuff. Here's Miss Piggy singing Madonna. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. <laughs> ooh. 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 Last night it was a prince. <laughs> Don't cry for me, Oscar Mayer. 
Here's uh, Bill Clinton singing Lou Vega. A little bit of Monica in my life, a little bit of Jennifer makes it right. That's enough of that. <laughs> Great album. There's another one that goes in there, but I forget what it was. You ever do that, forget a bit? Oh, yeah. You ever been on a show and somebody told the joke you were just about to tell? Oh. <laughs> there have that happened there. I was, we were talking before the show, I wanted to mention this. We met years ago, and, uh, well, you're going to understand, I started in show business when I, in 1978, okay? 1978. Four years before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I really did start uh, that young. I, I was 16 when I started, and uh, then when, oh my God, when I turned 21 and went to the Ding Ho and said, look what I got, they were like, we've been serving you for five <laughs> years. They were a legendary comedy club in Cambridge. So I met him on the road. There's a place in Lemonster, Massachusetts called Pancho Villa, and I couldn't wait to tell this story. This, I didn't even want to talk about it before the show because I was thinking, okay, I got it out. I won't say it on the air, but oh, my God. When you went in this room, it was a three-level room. So you walked in, and there's a dance floor, and then midway, there's a stage where the second floor is supposed to be. And then the third floor is a balcony right up there. <laughs> so they would charge 20 bucks a head for people to sit in the crowd. But they would charge $5 for the same people to watch it on the closed circuit TV upstairs in the room. So, you got, am I lying? Uh, you got it right on the button, boy, <laughs> right on the button. I did, uh, I'm surprised dust ain't coming out of my ears remembering all this. I was like, nightmare. In the business, that's called a hell gig. But it's go a hell on. gig. <laughs> so... And, and then you'd go in, and you're standing on the stage. The audience is way down there, and you can't see everybody else in the room. That's, there's like four people that paid 20 bucks a head. <laughs> there must have been 100 people in that room up there that paid five bucks a piece <laughs> watching it out. So you'd tell a joke, and a couple people would laugh. And then off stage in the next room, you're in, ah! I got a great hell gig story for you. Ready for this? Uh, well, speaking of shows, uh, I'm going to be in the area. I'm working in Epping. Epping. New Hampshire. I'm going to be at the American Legion on March 10th. You folks at home, please come see me. Uh, Dave uh, Tuig's going to be there. And my prize pupil, Denise Richardson Gordon, is there. <gasps> so you have to understand, I started working with her around 1992. We must have met wow. in what, 88? 80, 84 or 6? 85, think, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, I had been out for so long, uh, um, uh, from 82 to 85, I did drag, and when I found out I could make more money without the drag, I was like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> so, <laughs> plus All if that you, money on makeup. Well, yeah, <laughs> plus if you do drag, then it's just, you know, you can only do women characters, and I wanted to do men and women characters. So, whereas I, you know, in my act, I, I do women, but off stage I don't. <laughs> but dump bump <laughs> So... <laughs> Well, <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, me and Denise are going to this show, and there's several things, if you're not in show business, you have to watch out for. One of them is a circular bar. It means everyone in that bar is going to look at the bartender, not at you on that stage over there. The other one is a stage that is not lit really well. The other thing to watch out for See, this is really nice. This is a microphone. It is coming out of the speaker. I can see the microphone. I can see the speaker. You know it's a bad gig. So, and the microphone plugs into an amplifier. And so this microphone plugged into the wall, and, and, and the speaker was in the ceiling. Plus, the room was, the, we walk in, there's the circular bar, and it's cut off in the middle with a, a, a partition that if they don't have enough people, they're just going to use one side of the bar. But the partition's going up the middle, and there's one room over here, and there's one room over there. 
So you basically have to do the setup for a joke to this room, and then the punchline <laughs> to this room, and then the setup over here, and the punchline to this room over here. And we go in there, and you gotta understand, Denise and I, I mean, yeah, we're wild and crazy and all that, but we pray before shows, we pray. There's nothing wrong with praying, we pray to St. Cecilia. S do you know about this? St. Cecilia, patron saint of the arts. Okay, so we pray to St. Cecilia. So, or, or we pray to St. Cecilia. So, so. Pepperidge Farm boy yeah, just yeah, come yeah, in, did he? Sure. <laughs> so, uh. But, you know, before, there's, there's show business, you know, superstitions. You never say good luck before a show. You say break a leg. So before the show, we're looking and we're seeing all this. And I said, okay, five minutes, we're going to do it. You know, get ready. She reaches out her hand to pray, and I shook her hand. I, uh, good luck. Uh. <laughs> that, that was Ouch. Story. Ouch. This is a great show business <clears throat> story. Are you ready for this one? <laughs> Are you all sitting down? Good. So, <laughs> so one observation about that going back. Go ahead. Well, yeah. We used to. I don't. We always called it a Wimbledon room because <laughs> you was going like this the whole time. Uh, yeah. You had to play it back. Yeah. And, and the that. audience so had. Like, how was that? How was that gig? Oh, it was a Wimbledon room. Yeah. We went, it was long and narrow. What was it? Stevie D's was like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. It was about four four rows deep. But about 16 that way. Like, <laughs> dee 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 By the time you got off stage, you was like... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, go ahead. And I'm those sorry. Wimbledon rooms, no love. Oh, no love. Well, I say, gotta go back. with it. So, uh, what was I lying about? It must have been a good one. I don't know. I'm sorry. Interrupted. Oh, uh, I forget. That happens. It uh, happens all the time. That's why I got no cards. I, you got I'm no old, cards. Cause you, you, you're about, you're knocking on on the, the sixth decade, ain't you? you oh, I yeah, I I, you I am. And I'm, went, ran right through it, did you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sixty. Well, it's amazing because you know I'm Italian, and I'll show it to you. I got a picture on Facebook from when I, I'm sixty now. I got a picture from when I was fifty, and you put it next to a picture of when I was twenty. I look exactly the same. And then, I, it's honest to God, I'll show it to you. I mean it. And you look at you. I was hey, going to dodge the nose there for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, okay, it's a, good. Good for but you. I but I remember when I was grip. 20 thinking, this is great, looking 20. And then when I was 30, I still looked 20. And I was like, this is great. And when I was 40, I looked 20. I was like, this is great. And then I turned 50, and I was like, I still look 20. No, Bob, you look like a 50-year-old man ever since you were 20. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, all right. I was trying to think what was the. Uh, anyway. gonna, all right. Well, see, I got, I got, uh, I get, uh, and actually, I first wrote it for these boys here at PPM TV. Growing older, I don't know if you hit that. I, I, I actually had a. a you remind me because you. Well, you got a reason. You're Italian. You're kind of hairy guy. Sure. I, I remember the first time my girl who cut my hair. She asked me if. I, she says, uh, do you want your eyebrows touched up, trimmed up? <laughs> and I was like, geez, am I really that? Am I starting to be that Andy Rooney boy with the caterpillars yeah. above his head? And I was like, geez, I'm. Um. But, but it always came in one, two, threes, that getting older. The one, first the girl asked me if I wanted my uh, hit, eyebrow snip. Then another one, uh, the, the, the final one, because I, I forget the middle one thinking of that. Uh, the last one was when I went to one of them Pepper Farm outlet stores yeah. right, right up here at Kittree. And I'm, I'm just... Bringing up my bread, discount bread. She woman looks at me and she goes, "You got your senior discount card." <laughs> you know, it's one thing being asked if you know to trim your eyebrows, but when one somebody's looking right at you and going, "You look old. You got your old card." <laughs> <laughs> that ain't right. But yeah, I digress. Go ahead. What no, you? no. I, for me, it's it's just you know losing my hearing is that's 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 the part. And I, I swear, if I if I if I didn't lose my hearing, I I just have no comedy these days, because I I tell the story, you know. So this is a great story. Years ago, I'm doing a. a Can we get a zoom in there? We got a thing just a. Just What's to the matter? You brought that up. Selective <coughs> hearing. I I, I got a, I got a little hearing problem myself, and my wife bought me these, and it says. Selective hearing specialist. <laughs> <laughs> I believe there's another woman that called it spousal deafness. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I like that. But anyway. No, no. I, you know, the story was I told this on the way up. Um, my aunt, I had two aunts that were deaf, so I thought this is okay. in the family. But they both wore hearing aids, but one of them 
she turned her hearing aid up all the way, and consequently, Dorothy talked like this because she would always talk quiet because she thought that everything was loud <laughs> no matter what she said. And consequently, <laughs> Evelyn, Evelyn had hers turned oh, off. Wow. <laughs> wow. So I walk in the house, there's Evelyn. How you doing? Huh? I said, how you doing? Huh? How are you doing? She goes, I'm doing good. I just got a new hearing aid. I said, you did? Yeah. It's the best kind you could get. I said, yeah. What kind is it? Huh? I said, what kind is it? Huh? I said, what kind is it? It's 5.30. <laughs> That's a true story. Here's my true story. <laughs> I'm doing a benefit, and it was at Kitty's in North Reading. Have you ever eaten oh, there? It's yeah. a nice, nice place, nice room, nice people. Can I jump Sa in? Okay. This is the you savior go, go story for okay. after mine. <laughs> we go there, and it's a group of, uh, for a group is called the Hiking Hornets, and they're like the Girl Scouts. And what they're going to do is they have benefits all year long, and they're saving up so they can do a bus trip from Boston, Massachusetts to Las oh to Disney, but they were going to stop in Las Vegas this year. And the girl and the woman running it is the gym teacher, and she says, "You've been to Vegas before. Do you like it? Do you love it?" And you know I'm such a lousy schmoozer. It's why I never got anywhere in show business. But I, I was just trying to go along with it. And I said in my best Mary Tyler Moore voice, I was like, yeah. She goes, well, if you like Vegas, you have to meet the guy who ran the strip for 20 years. And did you hear it? I heard it. The guy who ran the strip. You're trying to tell me? that the retired mafia boss from Las <laughs> Vegas, Nevada, is here in Reading tonight, and he just saw the show. If he saw this show, I'm in. So we go in there. After the show's over, she brings me over. There's all these women and the guy over there, and he looks like George Burns from the movie Oh God. And he's standing like this, and I was trying to be a better communicator. I learned if someone's standing like this, stand like this. It makes you, them feel that you're in you're the same right. boat with them. So I'm trying to schmooze the best I can, knowing I suck at it so bad. And I go over to the guy and I go, so what kind of clubs did you run in Las Vegas? And the guy goes, oh, you know, <laughs> boys clubs, girls clubs. And I'm thinking, this guy's talking to me in code. <laughs> He's trying to tell me that he either runs gay bars or strip bars, and I want to know what it is. So I go, <laughs> what were the names of the clubs that you ran in Vegas? And the guy looks at me and he goes, Boy Scouts, <laughs> Girl Scouts. And then you, you know how you talk to old people? I mean, I, I was 50 when this happened. This guy must have been 80. You know how you talk to old people like they're, like they're stupid or something? <laughs> and you o really over-articulate it like they're deaf, right? And I go to the guy, what were the names of the nightclubs that you ran <laughs> when you lived and worked in Las Vegas for 20 years? And the guy goes, geez. I never ran any nightclubs oh. in Las Vegas. I didn't work in Vegas for 20 years. Where the hell did you get that idea? I said, she said you ran the strip for 20 years. He said, no, I've run this strip for 20 years. Whoa. <laughs> it's a there great you joke, go, isn't buddy. it? There you go. Can I tell you the other one, speaking of just hearing stuff? My niece, Michelle, this is a Christmas story. <laughs> Well, actually, it was Christmas time. <laughs> this is how old this story was. <laughs> Any big wrestling fans out there? Big wrestling fans? <sighs> you, you wrestling fan? Okay. <laughs> there was a group called the Body Donnas, and they were these two blonde muscle guys, and they had this girl named Sunny who was like a cheerleader, and she was their manager. Well, she left, and they were looking for a new manager, and I was going to be the new manager <laughs> of the Body Donnas. And my act was going to be Camille Leon. That whatever wrestler I was 
my guy was fighting, I would dress up like that wrestler <laughs> to psych him out and imitate Brilliant. that wrestler. And that was my act. So you gotta understand, you know, you're all, you know, but you, you know, you weren't raised with this, okay? We had VHS cameras. It's a big flipping camera and you gotta put the cassette tape down into the camera. Mm -hmm. And you can't look, you, you, you know, you can't just keep taking it out and put it in the thing. We could just watch it on the machine to see if it was a good take. And I'd go downstairs as one cat. You're gonna love this story. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long way to get there, but it's so cool. <laughs> so I go downstairs as, as the undertaker. Then I come up, if it was a good take, we'd take it. If not, we'd go down and reshoot it till we got the good one. Then I go downstairs, come back up as gold dust. Then I go downstairs and come back up as Paul Bear. I I come down and come back up as the Macho Man. I come down and come back up as Hulk Hogan. You know what I mean? All the different wrestlers. So my niece Michelle was there, and to picture her, you got to imagine Shirley Temple with long, light brown hair. Okay, here she is, three years old. She's having trouble talking. Her sister Jenna had spoken clearly at the age of two, with full sentences, including prepositional phrases. <laughs> and now here's Michelle, and she's talking like this at age three. We thought she might have hearing problems. So Michelle says to me. Uncle Bobby, gee, we know you sound like a bite. Today, you look like a bite too. And I go, yes, I sound like everybody, and today I look like everybody too. And she goes, yeah, you sound like everybody, and today you look like everybody too. And then she goes, I seen you on TV of four. You saw me on TV before, and you have to understand, I'd been on HBO in 1983, evening at the Improv 1993, no one saw it. <laughs> Everyone saw when I wore the Christmas tree outfit on America's Funniest People. You like the outfit? Saw it in the window, had to try it on. So everybody saw that. She goes, I seen you on TV before. And I go, you saw me on TV before? And she goes, yes, I saw you on TV before. And then clear as day, she looks at me and goes, yeah. Are you a bum faggot? <laughs> Ouch. And I go, what? And she looks at me square in the face. <laughs> so serious. <laughs> she was so serious. Were? You, a, bum, faggot. And I'm thinking, my sister would never call me any names like this. My mother was alive at the time. I go, ma! <laughs> my mother comes in, what the, hell, what the hell's all the yelling about? I said, you tell Narnie what you said. And Michelle goes like this. The guy on TV? America funny people? And me and my mother at the same time went, Bob Saget, <laughs> were you on Bob Saget? Oh. Right? <laughs> and, the, and I said to my mother, I said, well, you know what I thought she was saying. <laughs> and my mother goes, you get a guilty conscience. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it, buddy. Well, listen, listen, before we bring David up, let's, let's talk about mothers, because my mother always just, we could get in a fight about anything. She's not living anymore, but oh my God, she's alive in my heart. But oh my God, you could fight about nothing. Where are you going? Out. Out where? Out. Who you going with? Have you seen my keys? I don't know, where are they? I don't know where they are, Ma. That's why I'm asking you, because I haven't seen them. I think they're lost. Oh. Where did you lose them? <laughs> well, if I knew where I lost them, they would not be lost. Well, if they were up your ass, you'd know where they were, you <laughs> son of a bitch. That's another thing. Your own mother can't call you a son of a bitch. Who's that a reflection on? <laughs> right? There you go. And I told her that. She said, you bastard. Well, again, <laughs> it's all you, not me. We gotta, we gotta move right along. Should we? The, and you get, bring up your, your thing. Your I would be gentleman. happy to. I'm even gonna loan him my microphone when he does his act. Let me just get this out of his way so we can have a nice place to sit. I, uh, I haven't. Whatever he'd like. I tell you, I've been doing comedy since 1978. 
again. And it's just the way, it's terrible the way things are in show business. You think it's gonna just be regular, you know? 83, HBO, evening at the improv, 1993. I thought 2003's coming, nothing. 2004, last <laughs> comic standing, but uh, I, I taught uh, stand-up comedy, improv comedy, and sketch comedy down at the Cambridge Center of Adult Education down in Cambridge, Massachusetts for a long time. And uh, long after that was over, I still coach. And uh, this guy's been coming to me for a while. I think he's wicked funny. He comes all the way from right over there. <laughs> Let's have a nice hand for Dave Tuey. Give him a hand, folks. So I'm, um, I'm really excited to be here because um, usually on Fridays is my pole dancing class. <laughs> It's really fun, and um, I have vertigo, so that pole comes in handy, you know, because I get dizzy. <laughs> but uh, I, I recently turned 65 years old and retired from my state job. And as a gift, my wife signed me up for one of those stand-up comedy courses. It starts next week. <laughs> So I'm hoping to be wicked funny. Well, not tonight, but you know, <laughs> after next week. <laughs> hey, can I just share something with you? I was leaving the house to come here tonight and I, I asked my daughter how I looked. And she looks at me and she says, well, you kind of look like that old man from the movie Up. What's that mean? <laughs> but I, I, I turned 65, which is halfway to 130, <laughs> so middle-aged. No, no, I, I did the math. It works out. <laughs> but um, my, my, I, I, I'm still, you know, kind of nervous up here. I'm self-conscious about my body because I, I gained so much weight since I was born. <laughs> and my wife tells me I'm getting a bobsled body because, like a bobsled, my body's going downhill real fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true, it's true. More and more, I look like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Especially those days I wear my red shirt and no pants. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I love my body. But, you know, they say, if you love something, you have to let it go. <laughs> so, so I let it go. Um, my wife is always after me. She says, you know, eat healthy, eat organic, uh, farm fresh. So I went with Pepperidge Farm. <laughs> yeah, ooh, I love that farm. I'd kill to own that farm. Must be great being a Pepperidge Farm cookie farmer. Waking up the mornings, hoeing the Tahoes, <laughs> sowing the Sausalitos, harvesting field at the field of mint Milanos. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> my wife, she, she, uh, she doesn't like them. She, go, she prefers those uh, Keebler elf cookies. Yeah, they, their big cookie is the fudge stripe. <laughs> I wouldn't eat anything with a fudge stripe. <laughs> And I don't think they even have a farm. <laughs> you know, I've seen the commercials. All they have is that Keebler elf cookie tree. <laughs> a cookie tree. That's stupid. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, this year marks, for me, marks 38 years of marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Five different women. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm just kidding you. I've been married to one woman for 38 long, <laughs> long years, you know. Yeah. 38 years ago, we, we eloped, which back then was the romantic way of saying Catholic, poor, and pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we weren't that poor. I mean, I had a lot of money in the bank. Or at least it sounded like a lot when I shook it. <laughs> But, 
Um, I, I miss those early days, you know? You, the early days when you meet someone and, you know, that communicate. You, you want to know about them. So what do you do? You ask question after question about their hopes, their dreams, their thoughts, their opinions, you know? But after 38 years, you run out of questions. I mean, we were at the supper table the other night, me and my wife, and, and I was eating, and I looked at her, and I smiled, and she looked at me. And she said, I hate the way you chew. <laughs> I mean, which technically isn't even a question, you know. <laughs> but at least we're communicating still, you know. Oh, gosh. And uh, I missed the romance. Oh, boy, in those early years, the romance. I remember many nights I'd come home from work late. My wife would be in bed, and all over the covers would be rose petals. I came home the other night, all over the covers were Dorito crumbs. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll finish up by telling you something that's been bothering me. Well, two weeks ago, I'm home. I get out of the shower naked, because that's the way I shower. <laughs> And I can't wear this red shirt all the time. <laughs> but my wife is standing there, and she starts laughing at me. I said, what? She goes, oh, my God, you're getting wicked old man boobs. Oh. Oh, so now I'm all self-conscious about my boobs. You're looking at them now, aren't you? <laughs> oh, shoot. My bra strap. <laughs> you women wear these things? <laughs> Anyway, I didn't how, know how bad it got. I, I went to one of those open mic nights last week, and as I was getting down off the stage, one of the other comedians yells out, Hey, Dave, nice set! I said, thank you, <laughs> but did you like my act? <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. My name is Dave Tuig. Yay, Dave. Dave. <laughs> Wicked funny, I'll tell you that right now. We ain't got a whole lot of time left there, do we there, Mr. Stage Manager? What did we say? We got all right, we got about five more minutes. I just wanted to say one thing about, uh, well, I, well, one, of course, I want to thank the boys for being here. You can come back up, you, you, yeah, you don't, don't be running away. I just, I get, we was trading stories, I got, I got just one thing, I, I got a, one of these observation things about uh, what you see on the side of the road, you know, because it's about springtime, and this time sure. of year we're going to see all that roadkill. Everybody talks about roadkill. Remember two years back, all them squirrels that was dying? They said because it was they was re reproducing so quick, they was falling off the, the wires. So they, well, now I ain't too worried about roadkill. You know what I'm worried about? The clothes kill. You know what I'm saying on the side of the road? You see them, them, <laughs> them sneakers, you see T-shirts, you see hats. I got a new game for you folks out in TV land to play. Come springtime, you go out on a car road ride trip. I, I call it, uh, you got to guess the kind of, of road, clothes kills. You, you figure it, it's either left or lost, dropped or tossed. <laughs> so next time you go down the road, you see that hat, you go, well, that, that was probably tossed. That was probably, well, that, that, but the ones I don't understand is though, that one sneaker. Uh, was, was, that, yeah. was that left or was that somebody just walking around? Oh, geez, I've got to get rid of this one. This ain't no good. <laughs> just, but that, that's the only thing I wanted to try out was at the top of my head. I wanted to try something different. So there you go, buddy. I thought you were going to talk about um, hunting when you, you talked about um, because I have a brother who's a big hunter. Yeah. And he says, he always makes the point, he says, everything I kill, I eat. And he, once he said that to me and I said, wasn't that Jeffrey Dahmer's motto? <laughs> <laughs> ouch, ouch, ouch. Well, uh, I, I, uh, was I the one thing you was, now who was, you was talking about somebody, I forgot we was. Uh, we oh, that's all right. And that, that's, uh, oh, because you know, there was a whole bunch of the guys, because I do do uh, uh, my old, uh, my old uh, uh, what you call that, uh, alter ego to, to, to Tom. And in case you didn't know, that's, that's my website up there. The, we get a shot of that, uh, to, to Tom Talks. And the reason that is, I got to throw this old nugget in. That's, do it. That's my website, because uh, to, to Tom stutters. Tom Clack stutters. He stutters. Every time he goes to a restaurant and orders a tuna fish sandwich, he gets two of them. <laughs> hey, we said we were going to do the Wizard of Oz. Not no, 
<laughs> you did it. You did it yourself. First they took my arm and they threw it over there. <laughs> then they took my chest and sampled it over there. You just try to stay out of my way. Just try. I'll get you, my pretty. And your little dog, too. I think he said oil can. <laughs> oil can what? <laughs> come on, come on, put him up, put him up. I'll fight him with one hand behind my back. I I'll fight him with one I do, I do believe in spooks. I'll fight him with my eyes closed. Oh, sneak it up for me, eh? Joel G, so <laughs> you think that's the way to wrap up the show? Can we, we have a big round of applause for all our comics tonight? Yeah. We, got, we got Dave there, we got Bob. We, well, my name's uh, C.L. Thomas, and hey, you folks get on that YouTube thing and get on the channel 98 and get back and say you want more of this stuff because well, I'd I'd love to have you boys back. I'd be we ready. Get some more comedy guys coming up. I and, think we'd, we'd pack this place. What and, do you think? And please come see me and David March 10th at the American Legion, Epping, New Hampshire. And next month I'll be at the uh, Portsmouth uh, Music Hall Lounge there. Nice, I got nice. that uh, April 21st, a Friday night, so you can come down and see that whole hour and a half of OCL. That kind of, that'd wake you up, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Well, I hope you folks had a good time. Is it all right? Should we say good night, folks? Oh, there we go. Good night. God bless you. So keep tuning in to PPM TV. We thank you very much, folks. One bow. Thank you. Da, 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 da.